Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for the First Baptist Church of Tarentum, Pennsylvania's Thought for the Day. And certainly we welcome the Holy Spirit's presence with us on this morning because we know that without him, we can do nothing. I just praise God for another opportunity on today to bring a message from just a snippet of God's word. And I am just ever so grateful for the opportunity because certainly God did not have to bless me with this chance to be on this side of the earth um, of the dirt and to be able to think be in my right mind and to bring a message to you, God's people. Certainly, we praise God for Jesus Christ, and we have been walking through the parables of Jesus Christ, and I have no idea how long we'll be working on the parables because we haven't even finished the gospel of Matthew. But certainly we praise God for every opportunity, and we're being patient because after all, what's the hurry? Um, my prayer is that each of these parables is different enough that we're able to glean a different word, a different message from God each week, and that indeed it is a blessing. And let me say this, and I'm not speaking about this week's message in particular, but there will be times when our thought for the day will be repeated, where it'll be either the same or extremely similar to one that had been done in weeks or even now years prior. But what I will tell you is this, we can never hear God's word enough. And often, a repeating of God's word is a blessing unto us that we might indeed be able to um, get the message and let it stick and become a part of our hearts and minds. So let's go on with today's thought for the day, which comes from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 28 through 32. That's Matthew 21, verses 28 through 32. And it reads, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first, Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Amen. And amen for this particular word from God. All right, you all. So as we go forward, let's understand one thing. God has called us all to do something. And that is extremely important for us to, to take hold of and to, to keep and bear in mind. Um, I know that this subject comes up often. Uh, what has God called me to do? Where should I be uh, in ministry? Uh, please know that every one of us has a calling on our lives from God. And we serve an intelligent God. He is going to call us in an area of our passion. He's going to call us in an area of our gifting. He's going to call us in something that would benefit the body of Christ, but also would benefit us. He is not going to call, and I said not, every one of us to be preachers and pastors. Uh, and let's separate those two. First of all, everyone is not called to be a preacher. Um, and that scares people often because every time we uh, ministers or others talk about a call from God, it's a call into the preaching ministry. 
And it, that's just not always the case. And that's not the only call. And just because we receive a call does not mean it's to preach. But we often think so because we haven't been taught that there are more than one, there's more than one calling. And then let me add to this, every person who's been called to preach has not been called to pastor. And that's a big one because that is a reality that all men and women of God who have been called to preach need to understand and accept. Every preacher has not been called to pastor. Some have been called to run street ministries. Some have been called to run youth ministries. Some have been called to be evangelists where they just preach God's, uh, Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection. And they're able to, to encourage people to accept Christ in a supernatural way. Every preacher is not called to pastor, but I would say every pastor has a little bit of all of those giftings because we have to do uh, multiple things. But there's no sad thing about a preacher who has been called to minister to uh, the dead uh, family member, the members of uh, deceased families, or even to those that are heading into end of life. Um, that is absolutely a ministry in and of itself. Yes, as a pastor, I have to do that. But there are some preachers who have been called to do that, and that is the primary call on their lives. And so I say that just because it is going to lead us into today's thought for the day. So understanding that we've all been called to do something, we need to understand that these two men, each uh, that Jesus is giving a parable, of course, and he's talking to the 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 elite, the leadership, and he of the church of the day, and he's saying to them, "Well, let me ask you this: If you have two sons, and their father comes and asks the one, I need you to go do X, Y, Z for me. Hear this, God the Father speaking to us." I need you to go do X, Y, and Z. And the person says, no, they aren't going to do it. And then ultimately they go and do it. Happens all the time, even with preachers and pastors, and especially with preachers and pastors. But it happens to those of you that have been called to lead youth ministries, those of you that have been called to deliver uh, the children's messages on Sunday mornings, to those of you that have been called to be prayer warriors on behalf of others. Absolutely, uh, our inclination as humans is not to accept these uh, responsibilities that that God has put upon us. Uh, and even though it's something that we would be outstanding at doing, we, we're just a little nervous about accepting it. And we often wrestle with God, uh, fighting back and forth. Sometimes we negotiate, oh Lord, I'll do this, but but please don't make me do that. Uh, and, and as if God is going to change his will merely because we're hesitant. And so certainly we battle, but ultimately we end up doing what God has called us to do in the first place, what he has directed us to do. And then you have another son who, when the father went to him, asked him to go do a particular thing. And he says, sure, I'll go do it. And then he doesn't. Ah, we see this person in ministry all the time as well. And this is a person who God has tapped to go and do a particular thing and who half do it. Either they never go do it at all. They say they're going to, but they don't show up when times get hard. They don't show up when the work has to be done. They don't show up uh, when they're called in for meetings. They don't show up. Those individuals have said that they're going to do something, but in their actions, they absolutely do not do it. I think about those individuals who have been called into any sort of ministry work and who throw their hand at it, so to speak. They have do it. Uh, they don't even put any effort towards it. Um, certainly those individuals are individuals who are not doing God's will. And certainly anyone 
who does God's will, as long as they accept Jesus as Savior, they are going to be a, a part of the body of Christ. And then you have those who don't, who are going to be outside of God's will and have to accept what comes with that. Jesus tells us, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. You know, we need to understand that whatever it is we're passionate about doing is not just our passion. It's God's call on our lives. And we need to see that for what it is. We need to experience it and embrace it. And then we need to do what it is his will for us to do. We should never be too busy. Our plates should never be too full. We should never be afraid. We should never be so tired that we cannot do what God has called us to do. And my thing is this, if God calls you and you say yes, go ahead on and do it. Go ahead on and do it. And if God calls you and you say no, just know that you are in a battle and it's a battle that often God wins. Yeah, sometimes he'll let people go because they insist upon it. They just insist. They fight and fight and fight. Um, but even then, you know, I, I can't speak to, to this from personal experience, but I would say when God has called you to do something, he never leaves you alone. You can always keep saying no, but he never walks away and leaves you alone. So let me leave you with this thought for the day. And here we go. It, I took a long way around to get there. The thought for today, tell the truth. Tell the truth. If you are a man or woman of God and you know that you have received the call and we all have, uh, and you have accepted, I think that's better, that you have been called to do a particular thing, just tell the truth. If you're not going to do it, don't half do it. But don't claim you're not going to do it because you know what? God's will is going to be done. So you might as well just tell the truth and go ahead and do it. Uh, or really, don't do it. I hope that makes sense for you all this morning, that inside of our hearts and our minds, our spirits, and as we pray and talk to the Father, just tell the truth. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word this morning. And our prayer is that we would all just tell the truth, that we would tell the truth as we um, hear a call on our lives to do various things to uplift and upbuild your kingdom. That indeed, Heavenly Father, although sometimes we may be hesitant, our prayer is that we would ultimately fulfill your will. And then, Heavenly Father, although there are times that we say yes and then we half do it, uh, don't have our whole hearts in it, that we would change that immediately and recognize, Heavenly Father, that we have seen you in the call and certainly we should believe that you have tapped us for the assignment. Our prayer, Lord Jesus, is that we would leave this message blessed in you and that Heavenly Father, over the course of this upcoming week, we would learn to just tell the truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.